Hey Defog, we are here today for a raw processing tutorial in Capture One. Today's shot that we're going to be processing is a lifestyle shot, predominantly with available light and some special full flash to balance it out. It's a very silky shot, a very subtle shot. It's that sort of Vanity Fair kind of cover story look. And the art of this one is to retain the subtle details in the highlight areas while obviously still processing the rest of the image to be a perfect end result. Let's have a look. These are the highlight areas I'm talking about. White tulips against very light backgrounds. We've got a lot of light on light on light textures over here and we just need to take care of that. So first thing that we're gonna do, I'm going to go to my global exposure adjustments and just make sure that I am happy with the contrast and the exposure and the sharpness and the highlight areas. Okay, so on my exposure slider, I'm actually quite happy with what I'm seeing, so I'm not gonna to touch that yet. I'm gonna put a little bit of contrast into the image just to see what happens to my skin tones initially. Now, that looks quite acceptable for me. Highlight detail over here, I'm gonna bring my slider up to see how much detail is retained outside the window. Not that I want to keep it all, but I just want to have a look and be aware of what is there before I carry on. So I definitely don't want that much detail coming back into the image. As you can see, it looks like an HDR image. I'm gonna drop it down to maybe about 40%. Pleasant, it's still got a little bit of a taste of HDR to it for me. I'm gonna take it back down to about 30% over here. Okay, clarity, I'm just going to take my clarity up by 10 points and I'm going to take my structure up by about 40 points. This is quite standard with, with what I'll do in an image. Once I've taken those two up, I'm just going to zoom in slightly and have a good look at what it's doing to the face that I'm not over doing the, the structure. It can tend to make your image look a little bit grainy. Next thing I'm going to do as part of my global selection, the color of her top isn't exactly right for me. So I'm just going to go back to my color correction editors over here. And I'm going to, in my advanced selection, take my color picker. I'm going to choose the color of the top. And I'd like to possibly just take a little bit of magenta out of the top and get it further back to a true fresh blue to complement the skin tones a little bit more. See for me this blue now and the caramel of the skin tones and um, the little voil dress for me complements a little bit better than the standard color of the top which has got a little bit too much magenta in it for me. Okay so there it is. Happy. Okay, I'm going to go back to my global adjustments now and have a look at saturation. At this point, it's a little bit oversaturated for me. I'm not too crazy about what it's doing with the skin tones over here. Drag it down slightly. I don't mind that. That's looking good. So at, at this point, you've always got to make a decision You've got two ways to go. You can increase the natural saturation of your image and have a fairly clean, natural looking image. Or another option that, that I will always go to and have a look at in an image like this with a lot of caramel highlight areas is that I'll go back to my Kelvin settings and I'll warm the image up 6200 Kelvin and you'll see that it becomes a little bit too warm. Then I will go back to my global parameters over here and I will drop my saturation to probably minus 15. Okay. So what that's doing then, <clears throat> by dropping the saturation again after you've increased the Kelvin balance, is that it's just giving 
a gentle, warm afternoon mood to the image. What you do lose, however, is saturation in the areas of color, especially in the blue. So let me go back and see if I can correct that a little bit. Go to our basic editor over here. I'm gonna have a look at the blues. I'm gonna see what I can do about the saturation over here. Well, that's work to bring back some saturation in the blue areas. I don't mind that at all. And my greens have gone a little bit yellow because I increased the Kelvin balance. So I'm gonna work in my yellow areas over here to adjust the hue. And I'm gonna resaturate the yellow areas just a touch. If I overdo it, it's gonna affect the skin tones too much. There, it's affected absolutely everything in the image and I don't want to do that. Okay, so just subtly bump up the greens in the image. And I think I'm sort of back to very dreamy, warm afternoon feel. Right, next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have a look at my local areas of adjustment by adding one or two layers. So the first thing that I'm going to have a look at is skin tones just correct one or two of the darker lines and just add a little bit of glow to the skin so add a layer select my brush let's call this skin glow okay once again right click drop the size of the brush I've got a bit more control of it. And again, notice my opacity is way down, my flow is way down. So I've got a very subtle brush that I'm working with. Uh, I don't want to be too aggressive with my brush. It's very difficult to work that way. If you're a bit more subtle, then you can be more precise with what you're doing. So first thing, obviously, I'm gonna correct that little line over there. Add a little bit of correction there too. I'm just putting a nice healthy glow into her cheek here. And correct the line of her nose. Well, I shouldn't be saying correct. I'm going to be adding a highlight because the highlight's on the other side coming from the window. I want to bring a little bit of highlight into the front side too. Just lift these highlight areas under her lips. And I'm going to start looking at And if you remember from previous tutorials, when I adjust the exposure here, because my opacity and my flow of my brush is set quite low, it's not a true one or two or three or four stops of exposure that you're adjusting, but it'll be a percentage of that. So probably about 15 to 20% of that. So when I increase by just over a stop, what I'm effectively doing is probably changing the exposure on the skin tones by about a quarter of a stop. Okay, so that's making me quite happy at the moment. Let's go and adjust the mask further. Right, let's zoom out of that now. Okay, I don't wanna overdo this. It's really just a subtle correction to help the exposures. Okay, so that's my skin glow on the face. What I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna switch the mask off and switch it on again, just to give you an idea of what that local adjustment is doing to the face. So it's a very subtle adjustment, but a professional adjustment. You uh, don't want to look like an Instagram photograph with a ridiculously unnatural look to your photograph okay so already when I look at this image over here I'm really really happy with with what I'm seeing when I mentioned in the beginning that it's that Vanity Fair classy but subtle 
incredibly polished look. I'll go into Photoshop afterwards and just clean up where the stylist missed this little area of top over here. Yeah, just goes to show you can't see everything through camera. You are going to miss a few things every now and again and ultimately it's my fault for missing this little detail but thankfully there's Photoshop and we'll take that little bit out over there. Last two things that I'm going to do to the image is as much as I've just put a little bit of a fresh glow on the face I'm going to add some highlight to the hair. Now this type of thing you can go quite extreme with it but again I'm just going to be subtly introducing a little bit more gloss to the hair and those famous shampoo adverts will obviously go way overboard with what they're doing to give you some wonderfully fake hair highlights to convince you to buy their chemically enhanced products right exposure let's increase all right there you go it's subtle but you can see a marked difference in the hair let's just take that off i wouldn't say that's dull but i would most definitely say that with the highlight boosted it's a lot better let's have a look again then i'm just going to switch that layer on and off beautiful beautiful healthy glow Last thing worth mentioning for those of you who like to peep at histograms is that we clipping and we peaking in our highlight areas over here. Usually that would be a worry, but again, I know and you know that these highlight areas outside of the window is what's causing the histogram to clip and to peak, and I'm not worried about that. That adds to my image. It's not burnout in the skin tones. So that said, I think we're pretty happy with the work that's being done and we're probably ready to process the image. So when it comes to processing, you know how you like to deliver a file dependent on client needs. Um, personally, I'll be processing a TIFF file, but a lot of the time I might only need a JPEG file. If it's just a proof for a client, I might send a small JPEG but you know how you need to process your files. So that lot is up to you. Choose one, check that your locations are correct and process.